Welcome back to the Crypto World channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is getting very close to the bottom for this correction because even though Bitcoin has broken below some short term supports levels, we're also forming a bullish pattern on the smaller timeframes. And right now, the Bitcoin market is sitting in fear. I'll be covering all of that and more later in this video. So definitely make sure you're watching all the way to the end of this video so that you're not missing out on any of this important information. And just before we jump into it, make sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're new to the channel, you might as well subscribe with notifications turned on for more updates just like this every single day. But with all of that out of the way, let's get straight to what this video is about. It's right here, what in the Bitcoin US dollar chart on the daily time frame. And as you can see, Bitcoin is already playing out this bearish divergence that we were previously talking about on the channel. And so now Bitcoin is obviously trending to the downside in the immediate short term. But when you're talking about the larger trends that we're in on the daily time frame, we're still clearly in a daily uptrend. So in these videos, if I'm talking about Bitcoin being in a downtrend, it's only in the shorter term on the smaller timeframes. But what we can see here is this correction so far has brought the daily RSI for Bitcoin very close to the same levels that we've bottomed out all of these other times in these major market bottoms for Bitcoin. So the September correction bottomed out at the 120 day simple moving average, which by the way is right now coming in at just above 51,000 US dollars. But if Bitcoin takes another week or so to get down towards that level, then the 120 day SMA would be coming in at more like 53 to 54,000, which is exactly where this previous high is coming into play that we set back at the beginning of September. So for as long as Bitcoin can just hold above 53 to 54,000, then all of this is potentially one giant retest of this previous resistance level, flipping it into support. And once again, if we're holding above those sort of price levels, then that would mean that Bitcoin is holding above the 120 day SMA, which is obviously a bullish sign. But according to the daily RSI, it could be possible that we don't even make it down towards those prices because we simply don't have a whole lot of room left to the downside in the daily RSI. Of course, if we stop here and see a bit of a sideways consolidation and then another leg to the downside breaking below immediate support levels, then a sideways consolidation or a slight bounce back to the upside would reset the RSI, giving us more room to the downside later on. But as of right now, if Bitcoin continues to drop to the downside in the immediate short term without any sort of bounce or sideways consolidation along the way, then we're simply going to reach those oversold areas a lot faster than if we had some sort of sideways consolidation or bounce back to the upside in the middle of the correction. So when you're taking that into consideration, it's quite possible that this correction could play out a lot faster than the September correction because even though we did get that sideways consolidation for about two days as we were talking about on this channel back then zooming back out on the daily time frame it really wasn't too significant and so this is actually a good sign for the bulls out there because this means that we are closer towards the bottom now but I want to make it clear that right now we haven't confirmed a bottom so technically it is still possible we could go a little bit lower but we don't have a whole lot of room left to the downside as I just mentioned at least just in the immediate short term and talking about the shorter term zooming into the three hour time frame for Bitcoin and what we could see here is the fact that Bitcoin broke below these important support levels in the immediate short term so obviously this here is a bearish sign technically speaking so it is really important for Bitcoin to start getting back above 58,000 and reclaim those levels because as an example if Bitcoin flips $58,000 into resistance then if we see something like that that would basically set up that next leg to the downside towards these lower levels that I just talked about but I mentioned in the intro of this video that there is a bullish pattern forming right now for Bitcoin on the smaller timeframes. So this is mainly visible on the three hour charts and also on the two hour charts. Basically, we're forming a bullish divergence. Looking at the lows in the price, we saw lower lows, but looking in the lows in the RSI, we have seen higher lows, only slightly higher lows, but it still counts as a bullish divergence. And for the beginners out there, a bearish divergence like this signals to us that the sellers are losing momentum. And so basically, Bitcoin is due for reduced selling pressure coming soon, meaning that we're either going to see some sort of sideways consolidation again here in the short term, similar to what we saw back here, or we could see a slight bounce back to the upside, but basically just reduced selling pressure. Now, keep in mind, this is only visible on the smaller timeframes like the two hour chart and the three hour chart. It was previously forming on the four hour charts, but since then, as you can see in the RSI, we actually ended up forming a lower low in the RSI, therefore canceling out this bullish divergence. So considering the fact that once again, this is only visible on the smaller timeframes like this two hour chart, this means that the bullish divergence will play out a lot faster than a pattern on the daily time frame, for example. And also any pattern that we find on a smaller time frame, like the two hour chart is not as significant as a larger pattern on a larger time frame. So even though this is a bullish sign showing us that we could be due for reduced selling pressure on the smaller time frames, like the two hour chart, technically speaking, we are still trending to the downside. And once again, we haven't confirmed a bottom just yet. So don't be too surprised if we do end up seeing a little bit more bearish price action potentially coming after this bullish divergence 
resistance plays out. But once again, going back to what I was saying earlier, we are getting very close to the bottom according to the daily time frame and especially the daily RSI. And on top of that, the Bitcoin fear and greed index also shows that we are approaching a bottom very soon because as you can see right now, we are currently sitting in fear. For the beginners out there, what this fear and greed index actually means for Bitcoin is essentially the closer we are towards extreme fear, the closer we are towards a market bottom and we're due for more bullish price action very soon. But the closer we are towards extreme greed, that is usually a sign that we're due for a correction sometime soon. Now, it's important to mention that this indicator can stay in extreme greed for up to a couple months at a time and extreme fear for similar amounts of time as well. So I definitely would not use this indicator all by itself, but I would for sure use it in a basket of other indicators to get a well-rounded look at the overall market right now. And so basically, the further this Bitcoin fear and greed index plunges into fear and approaches extreme fear, the more bullish I get for Bitcoin. And obviously, this indicator doesn't have to hit extreme fear. But if we do end up going that low in this indicator down towards extreme fear, then personally, I will be accumulating a lot more Bitcoin, especially if at that stage, Bitcoin is trading at these lower values that I discussed earlier in the video. And another bullish sign for Bitcoin showing us that a bottom might not be too far away is simply the Bitcoin order books across all of these exchanges. Because as you can clearly see right now, there is a lot more buy orders for Bitcoin set to the downside just below the current Bitcoin price. But looking in the sell orders, there's barely any sell orders for Bitcoin to the upside, at least in comparison to the buy orders. So this simply shows us that there's a lot more people wanting to buy Bitcoin at these lower prices, which will help act as support for Bitcoin down at these lower levels. Whereas if Bitcoin starts to bottom out and head back to the upside, there's not a whole lot of sell orders to the upside, meaning that there's not a lot of resistance to the upside, at least when you're strictly taking a look at the sell orders across these exchanges. And just really quickly updating you on the Bitcoin funding rates across all of these exchanges, because this is actually pretty important to keep an eye on. But as of right now, all you need to know is that the Bitcoin funding rates across all of these exchanges on average are looking pretty neutral. There's a couple here that are a little bit more positive than normal. And there's a couple here sitting in negative territory. But across the whole market, just looking here on average, once again, the funding rates are looking pretty neutral at the moment. And for the beginners out there, just based on the funding rates alone, that means that there's around an equal amount of room to the downside as there is to the upside. In comparison to a few weeks ago when Bitcoin was at the all-time high, these funding rates were incredibly positive, showing us that the room to the upside was very limited and there was more room to the downside. But right now, the room to the downside in the funding rates is much more limited compared to where they were just a few weeks ago. And if you don't already follow me over on my Twitter, what are you waiting for? Because I post these real-time updates throughout the day on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and also some other altcoins that I might not even mention on this channel. So for anyone that was following me on my Twitter, you would have known about this information hours ago. And obviously, all of these extra updates on my Twitter are completely for free. And the link to my official Twitter is in the description down below and also in the pinned comments. But anyway, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed or got something valuable out of this video, make sure to leave a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, you might as well subscribe with notifications turned on for more updates just like this every single day. As always, I really do appreciate all of your support in the channel at the moment. I can't thank you guys enough. And in case you missed my last video on this channel, I shared my top three metaverse altcoins that I am paying attention to right now. So that video will be popping up right here on your screen right now. So definitely check that one out if you haven't already. But anyway, that is really everything I've said for this video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.